Once again, I want to welcome you to our program. And today, I just want to quickly share a few things that is making the trend on the social media, especially in the Christian circle. And when I see things like that making the round and among Christians and Christians become part of it or sharing such news, it concerns me because as a Christian, one thing the Bible wonders about, Paul told us, he said, we shouldn't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. And we need to understand what are the devices of the enemy. First of all, quickly, uh, I'm not, uh, I believe in sharing, you know, especially the gospel has to be shared because that's what the command that Jesus commanded us to go. He gave us just one command, go ye into the world and share the gospel, preach the gospel. It's very important. But when we begin to start sharing things that are become, uh, the word call it fake news and uh, the church uh, our members of Christ, as Christians get involved because remember, when I mention the church, I mean Christians because we make up the church. Without us, there's no church. So when I refer to the word Christian, please don't get me wrong. I'm simply saying as Christians, the way we get so involved in the trend and we start sharing some of this information and these are some information that we should be knowledgeable about, which has to do with the kingdom of God. And uh, as a matter of uh, uh, preachers of righteousness, we are supposed to be able to disseminate some of this information and put it out there and say, no, this is fake. This is not what the Bible says. For instance, if you look at the issue, there's a story of raptures all over the place now that Christians are sharing amongst themselves. They're quoting scriptures. Preachers are preaching righteous, uh, uh, I mean, rapture this, rapture that, and all that. But let me, let me, let me, let me put that in perspective from my understanding. I've always preached and shared in the past that we shouldn't use rapture as an escape from our issues of this world. Meaning we've designed ourselves, oh, we're going to heaven. Yes, we all know that. So with the chaos in this world, we need to escape out of this world. That is not the way Jesus wants us to exit out of this world. Jesus wants us to exit out of this world in a glorious manner, in a spectacular fashion that the world will know that, yes, these are the children of the living God, not children who are hiding because of crisis. In the time of war, we, take, we run into hiding, waiting for us to be taken into heaven, translated, just whip away from this world and take into heaven. In fact, when we do that, we delay the coming of the Lord Jesus. When we, are pro when we are projecting such hope and fantasy, we are delaying the coming of the Lord. Because the scripture is clear about the coming of the Lord Jesus. And those of you who have refused to understand and acquaint yourself with the word of God, you need to go back to the Bible, to the basics of the scripture. There is no doubt that Christ is coming. But there will be events that has been foretold by the prophets of old that will lead to the coming of Jesus. So let's not misunderstand this event and take one event that is happening around us to conclude that this is the final event of what is coming. Rapture is not going to take place tomorrow. I don't believe that. Neither today. You will say, how do you know? You don't know. Jesus didn't tell us the time where it's going to happen. Yes. But we have been foretold. There are signs and warning signs that has been laid out that this thing must come to pass. And one thing about the word of God, there is no way God can complete his program without accomplishing that which he has spoken. He has to complete those things he said he's going to do. And that has to do with the various events that will happen in the world. And this coronavirus that is happening around the world is part of it. In fact, like I said in my previous message, it's an introduction of what is to come. There's many more things that is to come. Now, we're talking of the world collapsing that the economic collapse. Yes. But have you thought of the event after the coronavirus? After they have found vaccines, after they have found a cure to this whole thing? Have you thought of what is going to happen next? Like the economy of the world that is collapsing right now. How is Christians going to react to that? Because when coronavirus eventually they're able to find solutions to it now, what is the next phase of what is going to happen? 
Have you thought of you not being able to put bread on your table because of the, of the collapse of the economy of the world? Have you thought of your children not being able to go to school because of how the economy and the education system has collapsed in the world? Have you thought of your children not being able to find a job after graduating, which is already happening anyway, because of the economy and the collapse of the world? These events must take place. And for us as Christians, what we should be developing, not joining this, the, what I call the, 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 the fake news media. When I mean the fake news media, I'm not talking about the genuine media. There are genuine media that is actually better off than Christians, sharing better information than the Christians. I'm talking those that are posting all sorts of rubbish that has nothing to do with the gospel, but claiming to be it from the gospel. If you are part of such people sharing those information, you are a partaker of sharing evil news. You are not a partaker of sharing the good news. Let me ask you a very simple question. In your family, how many people are ready for the coming of the Lord? In your church, how many people are genuinely ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ? Those are the things you should concern yourself. Pray for the salvation of the souls of men. Not for you to be translated into heaven when you are not even sure that you are going to make it. Because when you begin to partake of sharing the evil news, what I call evil news that is not of God, but claim to be, you are partaking. You are actually propagating the kingdom of darkness. You are not propagating the kingdom of light. Because the kingdom of light brings hope to mankind. And that's what Jesus came for. When Jesus came, he demonstrated that through his work and his actions. And one thing Jesus assured us, he said, but you must understand and remember, when these things are happening, do not live in fear. Because these things will happen, I am preparing a place for you. And I will come back to take you to that place. I'm not going to take you away in the midst of crisis when the world is burning down. No. So let's not use the rapture, rapture as an escape to run away from what is happening. In fact, what Christians should be doing now should be preparing themselves for the next phase. Next phase meaning they need to begin to think on how to invest in business. If you don't know how to run business, you need to start taking training on how to run business. How to plant, grow seeds, and harvest food for your table. Because what lies ahead of us is that you are going to need food to survive. You are going to need intelligence to survive. You're going to need technologies to survive because that's where we're heading. So you need to acquaint yourself with more knowledge because the Bible said in the last days, knowledge shall abound, but very few will be able to understand how knowledge works. In other words, you cannot be ignorant of how technology works. You need to be part and parcel of know how it works so that you can either take advantage of it or at least know how to use it to your own advantage. Secondly, you need to plant. You need to know how to plant food so that you can turn your backyard garden into a resources of food for your table. Because where we're heading now, you see that cost of living is already out of control and it's going to get worse. It's like the rain. When the rain is raining, it doesn't say because sun is going to come tomorrow, sun is going to start shining tomorrow and stop raining today. When it's time for rain to come, it rains. It's just nature. And as Christians, we should be preparing as ourselves and those around us as preachers, as pastors, as leaders, bishops, you're supposed to be preparing your congregation on how to get ahead of the time that we are living in. Not the time to stock people with fear and anxiety and waiting to be taken up to heaven and translated. Wonderful. If that happened tomorrow, I will be part of it, of the joy. But this is not where we are according to the scripture. The scripture is clear. Make no mistakes about that. So what we need to do right now, we begin to need to think of business. If your church, you go, all you do is spend tight and offering, expecting God to rain down manna from heaven, God bless you. I'm not saying people should not pay their tithe and offering. That's not what I'm advocating here. What I'm simply saying, bishop, teachers, and all that need to begin to teach the people how to profit. Because in time of, of crisis, there is even profit to be made, if you understand it. Like right now, there's short such, I mean, shortage of, of medical equipment around the world, even just ordinary masks. And you ask yourself, where are the tailor Christians, Christians who are tailors, who know how to sew? 
A mask is something you put a piece of cloth together, you make a mask and you start distributing. If the church was prepared for events like this, for instance, wouldn't Christians who are designers and tailors and all that begin to make masks and start distributing around the world? Crisis, see it as a time of destabilization, but also as a time of taking advantage of what is happening. Because how will God enrich people if we are not wise in taking advantage of what is happening? Becoming part of the solutions. If we're producing, for instance, then like I said, we have designers among us who can produce man can start to supply. We are becoming, we are part of the solutions. We're providing solutions. Why can't we form a simple cooperative? Teaching people how to manage business, how to come together in the church group, form five people, ten people, put money together, start selling goods, produce goods, and start to sell to the people and put food on your table. Why don't we start teaching people on how to profit in times like this or what lies ahead? It looks doom and gloom, but this is how we're going to walk through it. Church is going to need money to propagate the gospel. Tight and offering, time is coming, is not going to help. That for us to sustain, we will all have to be all productive in the body of Christ. I'm not just talking of sharing the gospel through our physical involvement in the production of food, of manufacturing, of distribution of goods, of marketing of goods, of advertising, of media management, technological management, everything we need to be involved. We cannot continue to take the back seat, hoping and waiting for God to come and take us away just like that. He has given us an assignment we must complete in this world. And until we complete that assignment, he is not coming. The more we delay that assignment, the more we delay his coming. So you and I, we have a prerogative, and that is to preach the word of God. Your family members, they are dying every day, they are going to hell. And you think you, because you have received Christ, you just want to get to heaven. You don't want to, you are not concerned about them. My friend, you need to be. You know why? Hell is not a place you want to wish on your worst enemy. It's a serious matter. So, you need to go out there. You need to start changing your mindset. You need to start thinking differently and begin to see what you can do after we are out of this quagmire. Why? Because what lies ahead of us is not going to be a beautiful scenario. So you need to start to investigate and begin to think where and what you need to do. Let the Holy Spirit guide you so that you can become a contributor to the advancement of the gospel for what is coming. So that you can become a contributor for the greatness and the ushering of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to begin to minister to your people around you in the body of Christ, outside the body of Christ, warning them and telling them what is to come. But meanwhile, while we do this, we need sustenance. And we know God has provided us the sustenance already. So let's not become like the children of Israel, just waiting to get to the promised land and not ready to do what it takes to get into the promised land. And that is to prepare for war, to fight war, to defeat nations, to learn to provide food and all that, to be able to inherit the promised land. Rather, let's be the children of light who shine light into the darkness that the world is aggressively seeking now and they have no that solution. But we've got it. And that's hope. In Christ Jesus alone. Through the salvation that Jesus came to give to everyone. So, we need to come back to what we ought to do and begin to share the true gospel. Let's not get paranoid by what is happening around the world, but rather let's begin to see victory and how we can take advantage of what Christ has already done for us, of what Christ has already told us and what Christ has already warned us about. Let's take advantage of it. And we are in the rightful position because people are going to come seeking for God. What are you going to tell them? Your family member is going to see you shining if you, are, if, you, if, you, if you agree or if you decide to shine. And they're going to come to you. What shall we do? It's no longer pray, pray, pray. Prayer is not good enough. It's not good enough. We must also act upon what we pray. 
so that we begin to see results. God wants to manifest himself to the world. God wants to show himself to the world. He can only do that through you and I, whom he has given sole authority that has been given to Jesus. When Jesus, before he left to heaven, when, when he met with his disciples, his final, final meeting, he said, look, all authority in heaven, on earth, underneath the earth, has been given to me. And I am transferring that authority to you. Go and rule the world and conquer the world. But we are not operating that authority. So until we learn to come back and begin to operate in that authority that Christ has given to us, we will continue to run and hide, hoping that Christ will come and rapture us away. Beloved, let's not delay the coming of our Lord. Rather, let us prepare the mind of men and women around the world about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please take this seriously and let's begin to share the gospel and let's begin to become more creative and more innovative on how we share the gospel. God bless you. Bye-bye.